You know, you still look for them everywhere you go. Even during this conversation, when a car drives by, my eyes go up because I look in the car. I just, I just can't help myself from doing that. So there's some ways that we haven't moved forward at all, but in other ways, I think we've made leaps and bounds. It's hard to fill the emptiness, and, and it's, again, hard to think about tomorrow, um, next week. One year ago, on November 3rd, Tyler Goodrich ran out of his garage near Southwest 12th and West Burnham Streets. He and his husband, Marshall Vogel, had gotten in an argument, prompting Goodrich to leave. But he never returned, and there has been no trace of him since. Vogel, who shares two children with Goodrich, says it's been difficult to navigate everything in the past year. This is just never something that you would ever imagine to happen or have to go through. And so there's just no, no book or no do this this day or when you're feeling like you can't get out of bed. Do this and it'll help. Vogel tells me it's the little moments when he really feels Tyler's absence. The other day I was cooking dinner and um, the boys were doing homework and then they started to wrestle and the dog started barking and it was just, it was a wild mess is what it was. <laughs> I just thought, he's missing this. He's missing this beautiful moment. Tyler's father, Lonnie, says his son's laughter and adventures are something he wishes he could have back. I miss not hearing dad, dad, Lonnie. <laughs> I miss not hearing that. That's, I look, I listen for that all the time. Lonnie tells me he has come to the difficult conclusion that his son is no longer alive. My heart and my brain tell me that Tyler's not with us, that he's gone. But yet I go to my windows every night, front window, and I talk to him out my window before I go to bed for however long it takes. Explain what happened during the day and, and what's coming up, and those kind of things. Ask him to come home. So I have hope that I'm going to see him drive, walk up my driveway every night. Lonnie says he knows Tyler was listening to him at first, but now he hopes his son has moved on. As hard as it was, because I, I told him that he didn't need to be there listening to me every night because I kind of felt that if he was listening to me every night, he was still struggling. He was still trying to solve this case, you know. And I said, I need you to go find peace. I need you to have peace. I said, go to God, have peace. Go live where joy and love and peace abound. Give up this crap on earth. Give, give it up and move on. That was hard. Because now when I still talk to him every night, I'm hoping that he's not hearing me anymore. I hope that he's in some place where he's not suffering. But that won't stop Lonnie from joining in on searches for his son. Goodrich's friends were some of the first people to organize those searches and get the word out on social media, creating a Facebook page that now has nearly 27,000 followers. They say it hurts not to have Tyler around. When you go to those things and you don't see him there, you just like, you just feel this, there's a void and um, it can't be filled with anybody but Tyler. And the lack of movement in the case is a tough pill to swallow. We know no more today than we did a year ago. And that is a really, really hard thing for me to cope with. It's still kind of a surreal experience because we don't have any answers. We don't know. Like it's just your best friend just is gone. Tyler's father, Lonnie, agrees. He says Tyler would have never just up and left. Family meant too much to him. He wouldn't have done this to us. And hard to believe that he could be living because he wouldn't have missed birthdays. He wouldn't have missed anniversaries. He wouldn't have missed holidays. That's not who he was. Family was everything to him. So it just leads me to believe he's not with us. But I hold hope every day that He'll come home and I'll get to hug him and love him and, and then be mad at him for disappearing. Lonnie says he knows the theories about Tyler running away and starting over are wrong. My heart is his heart. My soul is his soul. We share them. And I know that he's not just 
out playing games somewhere, living a good life. If he's gone, if death has happened, I can handle that. But not knowing, not knowing is something that just eats away at you. It just eats away at you. But Tyler's husband is refusing to give up hope. I very much so um, believe Tyler is still alive. Um, I have to. Uh, he's, he's the father of my kids. And he's my husband. Um, and until I get some sort of evidence or reason to think otherwise, he is still alive and he is coming home. It's disheartening to not get those updates because I think that's what everybody wants is some update that is going to move us forward. Um, but as far as in my heart, um, that's not going to change. That's not, it's never going to change. Vogel wishes he could send a message to Tyler. I would tell him that we miss him, his family and friends miss him, and his community misses him. And we need him to come home. Please come home. None of Tyler's friends or family is going to stop searching, but their biggest fear is that others will. I want to continue this long. At what point in time do people quit thinking about him? When does his face no longer resonate with him? Yes, if he's gone for 20 years, I will still be looking for him. But I can't get that into my head, that idea of how you can even continue on looking daily and wondering daily and hoping daily and praying daily for the same result <laughs> that in a year has avoided us or evaded us and, and we don't have no closure. But we'll do everything we can. I mean, we'll continue to put up posters. We'll continue to have car magnets. We'll continue to wear bracelets. We'll continue to talk on, put things out on Facebook. We'll continue to ta do a news interview every chance we get because that's what we have to do. And it's what we want to do to keep his face out there.